A month ago, I made a paludarium. Remember that? Yeah. So right now, it's now, and that means it's time for an update. By now, the paludarium has been sealed airtight. But before I did that, there were still a few things left that I wanted to do. I wanted to add some springtails. These two boxes are filled with about 15 globular springtails. I believe they're Smintheridus momgraini. However, I'm not 100% sure. I found them on my roof terrace, but it's the first time I have ever seen them. They're really pretty. In fact, I think they might be my favorite springtail. Now, if you had asked me 10 years ago, what's your favorite species of springtail? I would have replied with, what's a springtail? They were added to the paludarium. This is my table. Here's a fly that was previously a larva in the aquarium section. Before I permanently sealed off this ecosystem, I had to take the top sheet of glass off to add the springtails. While doing that, some of the condensation fell on top of the lid of the seacosphere. At first, I thought they were just some Daphnia, but then I took a closer look and I noticed that, well, they weren't. You have to understand that I was really surprised by this whole event. So I was thinking, what could this possibly be? I was still looking for an animal in the aquatic biome. At this point I noticed that they were showing some odd behavior, even though I didn't know what they were. I noticed that they didn't really move comfortably in the water, and that they didn't really look like they were even built to be in the water. I also noticed that they were clinging on to each other and dust particles, which I thought was a little weird as well. And I noticed that, you know, half of them were dead. So I came to the conclusion that they weren't aquatic animals. So I decided to take one out of the water and put it on a leaf. Lo and behold, it fared a lot better here. That's when I noticed that there were more. And then it struck me like a brick. The paludarium was riddled with aphids. There were hundreds of them all over the plants. That can't be good. It is quite likely that there were eggs in the ground from the park or on a plant from the park that hatched now that they were getting warmer. Or maybe there were just some adult aphids that I missed. I thought about adding a predator, like a ladybug, to deal with the aphid problem. Now that I still could, but I decided against that because having too large an organism could throw off the entire balance in the ecosystem. In hindsight though, all the aphids together would have probably had a larger biomass, as well as energy and oxygen consumption, than a few ladybugs. But oh well. Some of you old time subscribers might still remember the hair cap moss that I put in this jar almost two years ago. I wanted to try and see if this moss could still bounce back in the paludarium after sitting in a moist jar for two years. So that'll be a little experiment in this closed ecosystem. Wow, look at that, a little springtail walking on the water surface. And an aphid that looks, well, it just really doesn't look right, at all. But hey, I'm not here to judge. Look, 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 springtail, water boatman, springtail, I bet you didn't see that one coming. 
pretty. Now this does really look like a big invasion. It doesn't really look like this plant is doing all too well either. If it dies, those sprinkles at the back will be here to save the day and clean it up. There's one of the globular springtails on the moss. Now this is interesting. Some of you may remember the Chloeon dipterum or mayfly that was featured in the first episode of the spring ecosphere. What you're looking at is the final mold of the metamorphosis. A few days later I found the adult fly dead. It probably died of old age, because these flies only live a few days as adults. Why don't we take a look at the aquarium? I have noticed that the leaves have been decaying quite a lot. Compared to a month ago, there's a clear decline in the amount of leaves. In all of my other projects, the amount of leeches always dwindled. But in this paludarium, the amount seems to have grown. And it turns out they don't care for their fellow inhabitants at all. If you look at these leeches for a while, you notice that they are very energy efficient in their movement. They stretch their bodies as far as they can, then grab onto the surface with their front sucker, then contract as much as possible and hold on with their back sucker. This is called looping. What I think is so fascinating is how close they move their back sucker to their front sucker. As close as they possibly can. If you think about it, it does make sense. If they leave a gap the size of half a sucker, it takes a larger amount of loops to cover the same distance. I found this leech interesting because, for some reason, its guts were way more visible than in the other leeches. This is a very tiny baby snail. I really wanted to film one of those small water boatmen in movement, so here are my half failed, half successful attempts at doing so. And then I got distracted by a snail, as you do. I wanted to go back to that gaudy leech just for a second, because now it looks like it doesn't even have an abdominal wall anymore and its intestines are just sort of out there. A bit loose and not really protected at all. I also managed to film a water mite swimming and I noticed that sometimes it stops moving its legs and just glides along for a second. I hadn't seen that before. I also found a different species of Daphnia than the one we normally see in the ecospheres. These tend to stick to the glass, which I've never seen the other species do. Maybe you'll also notice that these have very dark eggs, 
whereas the other species have pretty clear eggs. I was filming this little snail inside the top of this leaf stalk when I noticed a lot of these tiny white critters in and around the leaf stalk, which is interesting to say the least. Also after a month I saw an aquatic isopod for the first time. I didn't have much time to film it, but this is a little proof that it's there. So let's take a look at the terrarium side. Since I closed the paludarium airtight, all the plants sort of caved in. I don't know if that's a coincidence or if there is indeed a correlation, but it sure happened. Fortunately, that doesn't mean all is bad, because these are new strawberry leaves growing. Yay! This is the newest and youngest part of the strawberry plant. I intentionally avoided putting in isopods in the paludarium because I was afraid they would ruin the plants. Unfortunately, I discovered this isopod after the paludarium was sealed. We do know from experience that isopods can survive in a closed ecosystem. Not all hope is lost for the grass. This is a new blade emerging from the ground. However, there is an aphid sitting at its base. And that just makes me so angry. I noticed that there were quite a few aphids and springtails and even some flies stuck in the seal. And that's something I simply didn't consider could happen. Well, it's certainly an interesting view. This is an abstract picture of my arm. That's pretty much all I have to say for now. But before you leave, I would like to thank Ed L, Meredith Avila, Alex Widmar, Gray Martin and Jake Fritzinger, as well as the 59 other patrons for their generous support. Thank you very much guys and thank you for watching.